I don't think that architecture can change people, but I think that it can invite people to maybe see something in a different way, invites you to consider something that's between the lines. I think that, um, I think that architecture can do that. Hopefully it can do that. <laughs> Having a, a public space that really feels like it belongs to the people of the town, everyone there, from the, the youth that are running around and having fun to the elderly people that are just quietly strolling through. I think that it's hard to find those places in American cities, but I think that they are vital to the, the true sense of community that uh, you could have in a place. Basilica Palladiana in uh, Vicenza. And that, that building means so much to me and the space around it is so beautiful to me because um, it, to me it is, it elevates the common person. So it's a public building, it's a civic space. It belongs to the people that live in that town every single day of the year. And um, it's been that way for hundreds of years. Um, so there's this collective memory in the town of this, it's just a building, but um, it, it's, it's incredibly beautiful, so uh, architecturally. Um, so when I was there, um, the light was coming through the columns and it made uh, the people I was with, it was just their silhouettes in the arches. And what was beautiful <laughs> was that uh, maybe that view has been the same for 600 years in that spot, you know, just silhouettes passing through the light of this, um, this massive architectural you know, piece that belongs to everyone in the town. So that, that particular one, that's, that's why I loved that structure, just because it, it belongs to the people, you know. Um, I think the space around it belongs to it as well. It's just, I've never, that was the first time I'd been inside of that building. And it, um, normally down in the piazza, you're looking up at everything in the town. Um, but this brought you up like two more levels. So you were up with the birds and um, just symbolically speaking, that that's, it's a beautiful experience. The collective memory here of a place goes back a lot further than in my country. Um, where in the town that I lived in Italy, they, they can show pictures of the town in the 1900, and it looks very similar to the way that it does. But more so than that, culturally, there's a certain knowledge of how life was in that place years and years before, just because it, in a lot of ways it's, things change obviously, but in a lot of ways it's still the same. In my country I feel like it's so fresh and it's so young that, um, uh, and people move around so much, I think, from their hometown. At least in my generation it's, it's not as common for a young person to, to stay in the same uh, town is where they grew up maybe. There's not as much of that assumed knowledge of a community that goes back for, you know, immeasurable amounts of time. So I like that about Europe, but I like what's nice about not having it in the U.S. is you're free from tradition to try out new ways of living or, um, you know, experiment with what might be considered a, a normal city or, or uh, a normal way of life. So when you're not hung up in a certain traditional uh, set of rules or framework, um, which we have it in the U.S. Every culture like has shared norms and things, but I just get the sense that ours is more in a juvenile state where we're questioning it more.